Hello and welcome to the channel, I'm Carl from Planet40k and today we're going to be previewing one of the units that Warhammer Community released in their Codex preview, the Ophidian Destroyers. Right, so these new models were previewed as some of the new models that will be released in the new Codex launch in October. They've got this wraith-like body and you'll see why later in the video. So a squad of three of these is power level 5 and four or more of them will cost you 10 power level. So firstly, as always, we'll go through their stats and keywords. So you can have between three and six of them in the squad. Movement is 10 inch, weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill three plus, strength four, toughness four, wounds three, attacks three, leadership 10 and a four plus save. So these guys seem to be lacking on the toughness department as they're only toughness four and all the other destroyers are now toughness 5. Also their save is only 4 plus rather than the 3 plus, so they're not going to be as resilient as the other destroyers like the locust destroyers and the scorpet destroyers, or the normal destroyers. They are however 10 inch movement. So as for keywords, they've got the, their infantry, they've got the destroyer cult and the ophidian destroyer keywords. So I think it's safe to assume that the abilities and stratagems that, that previously affected just destroyers and heavy destroyers will now be able to affect all destroyer cults, as all the different destroyers have the, the destroyer cult keyword now. So I'd expect this change in the new codex. Okay, so going on to abilities, they're quite stacked here with the abilities, starting off with living metal, and they still have yet to confirm how the new living metal rule will operate in the new book. So we're still going to have to go off what we currently know, which is they're regaining one lost wound at the start of the turn. This also applies to reanimation protocols. We don't know what it is yet. Warhammer community were asked about the reanimation protocols at the end of the video, but they clearly didn't want to get stuck into it as it's going to be changing. So how big of a change, we don't know. I just hope it doesn't get nerfed. They've also got command protocols, which was one of the new abilities that they did show in the video. So they showed roughly how it works anyway. So each turn you get to decide on one of two directives. Uh, like with chapter doctrines for marines or combat drugs with your Drakari players, you basically get given an, an army-wide ability every turn and you, you basically choose one. Um, the only ones that don't get it are the Catans don't get it because they don't have the, the keyword and nor do dynasty agents. I'm not quite sure what a dynasty agent is. Let me know in the comments below if you do know what it is. Is it like a Necron version of an assassin model? I'm not quite sure what it is. So anyway, most of your army should have this rule. So you select one of the two rules each turn to keep. So it can make you quite versatile when the game changes. So you can change up your tactics on the fly, depending on what your opponent is doing. And the other ability, so they've got the hardwired for destruction ability, which is each time a model in this unit makes an attack, you reroll a hit roll of one. So at the moment, according to the data sheet, the Locust Destroyers don't currently have it. I'm I'm pretty sure they'll get it once the Codex does get released, but at the moment they don't. But this unit does. Also, the Hyperphase Reap Blades have an ability within themselves, which is each time a model in the unit makes an attack with the Hyperphase Reap Blade, an unmodified roll of a 6 scores an additional hit. So exploding 6 is there with that weapon. And they've got Whip Coil Bodies. So each time a melee attack is made against this unit, you subtract one from the enemy attack hit roll. That's pretty decent. And the last one, which is quite a nice one, Tunneling Horrors. So during deployment, you can set up this unit underground instead of setting it up on, on the battlefield. You do this during the reinforcement stage of the movement phase, and you can set it up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches away from enemy models. So basically deep strike. So they've got this like Ravener feel now, like from the Tyranids. So you can, you'd be tunneling up mid game getting straight into combat. So yeah, I do like that one. So moving on to their weapons. So this unit is melee only. And one model comes with the Hyperphase Reap Blade and the other two out of the three have the Hyperphase Threshers. All models in the unit have the Ophidian Claws too. So the Reap Blade and the Threshers are the same weapons that the Scorpet Destroyers have. But like I said, the, these guys also have the Ophidian Claws on top. So firstly, the Hyperphase Reap Blade, which is strength plus two, so that's strength six minus four AP and three damage. It's a pretty nasty weapon. So only one of the models in the unit has this. So he's going to be having three attacks at weapon skill three plus. So you need to remember his abilities as well. You're re-rolling the ones and any unmodified hit rolls of sixes score another hit. But before any of these re-rolls and abilities have been used, if you've got three attacks, you should be averaging two hits anyway. And then you re-roll. If you've got any ones there, you're re-rolling the ones. 
any sixes are making more so it's going to be a few attacks there so strength six is wounding toughness three models on twos um, toughness four and five models on threes toughness six models on fours so it could even go for the more heavily armored units that are up, right up to toughness 11 on fives but to be honest i'll be aiming at things like the the two or three wound primaris marines they'll chew through those in no time with that minus four ap and damage three so the other two models in the three man unit are armed with threshers these are only strength four but you gain an extra attack with them so that totals four attacks each so with two models you're getting eight attacks hitting on threes again re-rolling your ones so on average you should be getting about six hits at minus 3 AP, that's no joke, and 2 damage is very nice as well. That'll be chewing through those Toughness 4 Primaris Marines with ease. So the last weapon they have here, which is the Ophidian Claws. These claws are actually additional attacks to your base attack, so you get 2 attacks with them per model. So a 3-man squad of these is going to be getting 6 attacks, and it's at minus 1 AP single damage. This will also benefit from the re-rolling ones as we mentioned. So 6 attacks, hitting on 3 re-rolling ones, you should be getting close to 5 hits on average there. So you'll be knocking off a model or two with that as well. Not a bad little extra. So going on to the dynasty codes that work well with these destroyers. Um, the Nefric dynasty code grants a 6 plus in one save in the new codex. And it also gives the unit an automatic 6 inch when advancing. And they can do this through other models or terrain like a beam. They can also use this to fall back in the same manner as well. It can be quite useful to you know getting them up the board or getting them out of combat and getting them into a, a more juicier target. The Novak dynasty code grants a plus 1 to charge rolls and also a minus 1 AP modifier in the first round of combat. And that can be handy because if you're deep striking in, that plus one gives you only an eight inch charge, which that makes your odds a lot better. The, the two main weapons in the unit don't really need the minus one AP modifier, but the Ophidian Claws, which were minus one AP, will become a minus two. So that's that's a nice little perk there. The Swarkhan Dynasty is probably the dynasty to go to here, as it grants a five plus feel and a pain against mortal wounds, and also allows you to re-roll one wound roll for each unit per phase. Not only that, but it gives you a bit more resiliency against things like smite, and re-rolling wound rolls are nice anyway. So remember, these guys are most likely deep striking and jumping straight into combat, like an alpha strike force, to cut down the big threats that your opponent has as early as possible. So turn two and three, you'll probably find yourself being smited, perhaps. Or you might just find yourself against like Death Guards for example and they've got all sorts of mortal wound shenanigans that they throw at you so shrugging off, shrugging off a third of them with a feel no pain roll is pretty decent. Something else worth noting here, um, the Scorpic Destroyers had a plasma site in the Indominus box set and it's on their data sheet as well and they've got an ability which it gives you plus one to your strength of all your weapons and also plus one attack. Now in the video preview they did for the Ophidian Destroyers they also showed a plasma site so you can only assume that it will be in the kit and on their data sheet once the codex does get released. And he costs 15 points. So all, like I said, all your weapons are going up plus one strength and plus one attack. That's that's pretty crazy. I also see him as like a mini blood bag for your destroyers because if you're taking any big hits, like for example, you take a melter hit, um, you can just stick it on the plasma site to eat the wound. It keeps your main guys alive a little bit longer as well for 15 points so it's, it's not too bad overall i think these guys are pretty decent they look cool and they've got a cool rule set and um, if there's a scorpic lord then can we expect an, an amphibian destroyer lord or are these models slowly phasing out wraiths um, there's lots of questions there to be answered really what do you guys think in the comments the only thing i'm puzzled about is there's not too much difference between these and the scorpic destroyers okay there's a few minor differences in stats like the toughness and whatnot but they just look like a different variant to the same unit and maybe that's a good thing i'm not sure in fact one thing that does spring to mind is the detachment builds so it depends on where they're going to be fitting in if they're just like an elite then it won't be as good but if they're in the fast attack slots then that's fantastic as you can now set up a destroyer only list because you've got a destroyer lord hq you've got your scorpet your heavy destroyers your locust destroyers and now these guys as well so you're gonna have lots of different destroyers so that'll be quite a fun build I wouldn't mind playing that. So once the codex does drop, we'll be doing a full review of this unit along with all the others. Once we know exactly what these abilities do, like the reanimation protocols and whatnot. Um, so you'll you'll see a Planet 40k star rating on that video. I'll probably add a bit more Tactica to that video as we've already gone through most of the weapons and stuff on here. So if you would like to see more of these videos, hit our notification bell below to get notified when we release a video. Remember to subscribe to support the channel and hit that like button if you found this video useful today. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.